Everybody loves evolution games, so today I'm going to try each and every one so you don't have to. And my goal in each of these games is going to be to design a creature that causes only suffering to itself and others. This one needs a little bit of work. He's able to twitch, but so far he's not able to move. So we're going to take away the head part and figure out how to make it actually move. I guess it actually makes sense then that we removed the head. If a creature can't see or know where it's going, it's going to cause more suffering for itself and others. Surprisingly, we haven't yet created an Olympic athlete, but he's getting better. So let's just go ahead and add more muscles to things. Eventually, it's going to figure out how to move. Already, it's getting better. I think I actually just created like a yoga bot. It just sort of does poses and hangs out. I think I see the problem though, it just needs more muscles. So if we go ahead and tie that thing to that thing, I don't know what I've created but it's actually making me uncomfortable. It looks like it's suffering. Oh there we go, it's standing on one leg. It's able to move. Olympic athlete is still debatable but we're definitely getting close to our goal of creating suffering for both the viewer and whatever this thing is. That kind of makes me wonder if we just keep adding muscles to things it will give it more uh, freedom to move potentially. It's okay, trust me, I've done this before. It kind of looks like a flying squirrel now, but instead of wings, it has like muscle fibers. What's it doing? It's just flailing on the ground now. I feel like it's suffering so much. Well, this kind of gives me an idea. Clearly, the more muscle it has, the more power and energy it gets. So let's reinvent the wheel a little bit. We're going to add some extra joints and therefore extra muscles. Strangely, this does actually look more human-like than the last one, and that was not at all my goal. But how does it perform? It's definitely a little bit like a drunken tap dancer on the ice. It's learning as it goes though and it's trying to move. I think this bodes well for what we have in store for ourselves today. Probably just needs more muscles in all the right places. No wonder he can't walk, he doesn't have any feet. That should perfect this poor creature. He can actually stand up, he just can't walk. But I think we've added too much muscle and we've lost his flexibility. So he's basically doomed to do this and slowly fall over until it slowly starves to death. But it has the added benefit of making everyone that watches it really uncomfortable. The sapling feels more like it puts me on railroad tracks and sends me in one single direction. So we're going to have to fight extra hard to do something horrible here. So we're going to go ahead and find the most unpleasant color to look at. Crank it up to maximum brightness, not to the point where it washes out. And blade size is probably going to be colossal. And then we mostly just sit back and let it do its thing. Luckily the earth here is red so our plant will kind of blend in. Oh we have to pick where it goes. It needs to go in the ocean at a proper depth so we're going to throw it right there in the center. So from there we've evolved the plants to get a little bit shorter so they can evolve in shallow water. And once our watery plants survive for long enough we can make our very own disaster of a tree and we can stick whatever these are on it. We're going to stick a lot of these on it because the more of these things there are the happier the tree is. I am going to take some of the little pokers off to put some of these on because I feel like uh, every tree should need some fruit as well. Yep, this is the world's first tree and it's perfect. They're spreading quickly. I am a little sad I can't yet create any living creatures, but trees and plants will work fine for now. They can still cause suffering. Now we can make jumbo plants. Hover this dot and scroll. Yeah, this is where things are getting get fun, especially because you can grab things and scroll on them and it makes different parts of the tree bigger or smaller. Like we can make a fat center if we want. And then we can drag the pieces around. So this is going to be, be a tree with giant fruit on each and every side. Then I'm going to add as many of these things as I can. And before you know it, we have a brand new species ready to thrive in this world. I was really hoping it would be uh, even bigger than this, but maybe it'll grow a little bit. <laughs> well, they add some nice diversity to the landscape, but they're not as big as I'd hoped. Uh, apparently something just went extinct because there's too many, uh, too much competition and I think my new spiky shrub is sort of taking over the landscape. And we've got new parts to put on these things. They're going to get more complicated now. So we'll just go ahead and add some more antlers to our tree. Yeah, this will be much better. This is much taller and it's going to eat so much sunlight. There's going to be nothing left for anything else in this world. And as the eons go by, it's going to thrive. There we go. It's like I always say, if you don't not know knots, tie lots. Just brute force it until it works. That's how evolution works anyway. And because this thing is such a raging success, I can now add branches. And then I can grab this and turn this up and apparently makes everything a little bit fatter. Now we're getting somewhere. It's got to be uncomfortable to look at. That's the whole point of evolving things. Move over shrubs, there's a new sheriff in town. Yeah, I feel like we've accomplished something here today. We've got a tree that absolutely catches all the wind and it's glorious. I also wouldn't want to walk through a forest of these things because even I don't know what these do. So in Adapt, it seems like we get free reign right from the beginning. And as amusing as this googly-eyed moron is, we need to make a few changes because this won't cause anyone any suffering at all, albeit it is annoying to look at. Okay, I think the first thing I want to do is make the creature overall bigger but give it really small eyes, if any. That way it can't see where it's going. 
Then we're going to give it some spikes. These apparently do cost a little bit of money, but I've got money to spend. I feel like the tail is overrated. We're not going to be swimming anyway, so I'm going to try and find a way to remove it. <laughs> okay, for some reason, we're allowed to give it an extra leg in the center, so it's going to have four legs now. We're already doing such a magnificent job on this creature that it's twitching. It's supposed to be standing there, but it can't hold still. So let's see if we can get some more legs in there somewhere. It's going to be extra quick if we get more legs. And we're allowed to put legs on its face. I guess if it falls over, it doesn't really have hands, so it'll catch itself with its uh, face legs. Uh, it turns out I am a little bit limited on how many parts I can buy, but I've got tons of attack, no defense, and lots of speed. So I'm just going to wildly run around hurting things, which is pretty much how I live my life anyway. Now, apparently I just need to wait to be born. And there we go. It's a baby ball of spikes with a very big friend nearby. Right, I'm going to set my mood to angry and go see what kind of uh, horrors we can unleash on the world. No, oh, and there's some of my own species. They're beautiful. They're going to hurt anything they go near. It just looks like a ball of suffering. It's just little eyes covered in spikes. Well, this creature looks reasonably peaceful. Can we attack it? Yeah, we hit. I think we killed it. We have a lot of attack because we're a ball of spikes. And yeah, it's not the most graceful or maneuverable of creatures, but it's not supposed to be. Got that one. Alright, can we take on a big boy dragon creature though? We probably can. Yep, we sure did. Look at all the meat that comes out of one of those. Not really sure what this creature is supposed to eat, but I'm not sure it matters. I would prefer to make a creature that doesn't eat, it just sort of dies within a generation. <laughs> okay, and now we're levitating. I'm not sure what happened, but this creature can also fly. That's what happens when you have six legs. My goal isn't to raise the next generation, it's to remove other generations. We're just removing competition. Oh, we got our legs back on the ground. We're evolving. You, whatever you are, you're far too big. Get out of my world. I'm gonna bully you. Yeah, you better run. Creature's also starving because I don't really know what this thing eats. <laughs> but this one's been pretty good. It's super easy to make a disaster that absolutely harms everything around it. This is a thing of beauty. As far as I can tell, it's just an AI trying to make this thing work and move as far as possible forward. And it keeps going again and again and again, but we can just sh change some of the things about it. Like if we do max joints maybe 20 instead, we'll cut the max joints in half and then it's going to have an effect on it. Less joints presumably mean more rigidity. Max fails, we're going to turn up to 1000. For power, we're going to crank that up to 1000 instead of whatever was that. <laughs> and then it doesn't go anywhere because the power <laughs> doesn't go in any particular direction. And then it just le left. It's gone. I don't know where it went, but it left. Okay, let's try to make everything bigger. The segment sizes are going uh, way bigger at most. And the minimum segments are going to go up to maybe half of that or whatever. Yeah, we'll try that. Minimum bigger than maximum. Now it has to be a 100 segment size. And that actually kind of works. Like it kicks a little bit and it died again. I think sometimes it just has to stop and think about what I'm trying to tell it to do because it's as confused as I am. But it sort of manages to hop away on us. So what we need is more mutations then. Uh, let's go maximum 20 mutations as soon as it wants to catch back up and minimum of 20 also. So it's just going to be set 20 mutations. That actually worked. It turned into some kind of fire ant. Now it's a dog. We're creating animals thanks to mutations. I made the round time longer though. That way this thing can survive for 10 seconds to see how far it can get. Okay, now we're going to give it maybe three times the power it has now. Yeah, that way it can scurry ahead in a hurry. As long as it gets that sort of focused in one direction, it's going to get somewhere good. It looks like a dog. No, it, now it's a crab. Now it's a dog. Now it's in between the two. We are getting further and further though. Like it's learning. It's getting better at using what we have. Okay, let's go down to uh, three quarters as much gravity. That should help it along. Less uh, gravity to fight against. Also, maybe less friction. Let's do the same. Obviously, it needs some friction to get like traction on the ground to propel itself forward. But so far, we're creating I don't know what, but it's something. Uh, I think if we also have bigger uh, max segment size, potentially, it can <laughs> give itself some bigger stuff if need be. So we're already around 280 and we basically made a baby elephant that does a backflip. Oh, that one was actually really good. I don't think we caught that, but it actually made it. Yeah, see, it's getting better. It's slowly getting better. The more of these we adjust, the more it learns. Okay, so let's take this and give it five times the power that will propel it to where it needs to go. See, it flies into the air. I don't know how these things are managing to fly, but they're getting airborne. I really like this game because just by default, it creates a very useless creature that flails around like this. There's no reason for this to exist other than you're trying to get it to walk. And just for fun, I changed the mutations up to a set 100, joints are up to set 100, just to see what that would do. And so far, the results are rather interesting. <laughs> it's pretty useless no matter what I do. It's basically a broken flailing octopus, and I'm here for it. 
Next um, is basically this same game but in 3D and it's a man wearing a beret instead. And this poor soul has no idea what he's about to go through. I mean, we've got all sorts of different things. We're going to give him uh, 5 seconds to work with. We are going to turn the power up to maybe 5 to start. Gravity we're going down just a touch. <laughs> There's so many different things to play with. Like we probably could just turn him into an octopus by making everything super flimsy. He is a little bottom heavy, like his lower parts are heavier than his top. But if you make him flimsy, he moves a lot further. But we can make him rigid right down the center. Like his spine basically is going to be like a 2x4. It's not going to flex. Okay, Mass by default has everything on the lower end heavier. That way his legs stick to the ground. We're going to change that. We're going to make his head very heavy. We're going to make his thighs and calves lighter. And let's just make his... Whoa, I spaghetti find my man. I did not mean to do that. This is why I can't have nice things. All right, well, let's turn the gravity up a little bit to hopefully get him de spaghettied We could turn the power up a little bit. I'm not really sure what the actual goal of this is, but he's definitely getting longer wherever he is. Okay, I can't really find him again. I'm moving the camera around. I don't know if he exists anymore. Okay, I went back to the default settings and he's still spaghettifying for some reason. I'm not <laughs> sure what setting is making him do that, but I'm not really good at this one. Okay, anything I touch now and he does this, I don't know what I've done. Okay, we restarted the game and we have a more normal this. This is more normal than how it's supposed to be, apparently. Okay, we need to give him some rigidity, though. That will get him probably walking. His legs, especially his spine, uh, his arms and stuff can flail. Okay, then I'm going to balance him out. Uh, his pelvis is moderately heavy, so that's going to go his spine somewhere in the middle. But his head, upper arms, and forearms are very light. That way he, uh, he does this now. I feel like this is the type of game for someone uh, much smarter than me. So we'll put the gravity back on. That's hopefully going to condense him either into a black hole or at least stop him from stretching into oblivion. However, we're going to turn down <laughs> and then he's going to settle right back into being a normal human. Okay, if we give it any power at all, he stretches. So let's take power out for a second. I, I have no idea how to make a move from here because without any power, he just sort of exists in space and his legs slowly break apart. Okay, I'm going to make even more rigid his legs and they still break apart. They're not as bad, but something here is giving. I made a few adjustments. Let's add a bit of power. And well, he doesn't exactly walk with a pleasant stride, but he's moving a little bit. And I think that's a goal. So mission accomplished. We beat the game. And here's a concept we all love. We need to float around and put stuff inside of us. And there's a lot of different things out there. We need some white stuff, some orange stuff and some purple stuff. But here is that beautiful sugar. It feels so vulnerable just being a tiny little cell. But I found some of the purple stuff and I think that means we can evolve if we want to. Now we get to evolve this thing. So let's make it super aggressive, opportunistic because we don't want it to be cautious. It's very brave, it's very active and very responsive. So it's just going to be a little terror. When anything comes near this thing, it's going to attack. So we're going to attach one of these. This will increase my movement speed. But before doing that, maybe I should use one of these. This is going to help me uh, produce parts we need. I didn't mean to confirm that, but we just got to put some more goos inside of us and we'll be able to evolve some more. We need some spikes on this thing. I found the mother load of colors. I just not really sure what it is I'm supposed to be eating anymore. Okay, well, we're long overdue to add a spike to the front of this thing. And that's definitely going to affect our speed and rotation, but we're going to throw a tail on the back. So there we go. One simple tail. Now let's see how this performs before we get carried away. We look like a hypodermic needle with a tail on it. And since we eat these little clouds, we're going to swim around in them for now, hopefully being able to add more speed and more spikes. Hey, look at that little thing. Uh, these are very aggressive creatures by default, so they are definitely going to go wild when attack as soon as they see anything. But I will say, I feel like I really have already hit my goal because I've created an army of species that just goes straight and beelines like a zombie for anything that's moving. Thus making the world a wildly more dangerous place already. Think I need some more of these because my something was too low. So we'll add a few more of whatever it wanted and then we're going to add some more speed. One spike is going to have to be good enough for now. We don't have enough mutation points, so that's fine. We're just a little bit bigger now with our giant spikes. Ooh, ooh, we got a creature. Yeah, I think we got it dead. Did I eat it? I think I ate it. Give me your parts. And another one. We just stick our spike into everything that comes near us. I have naturally grown another spike. Forgot that was able to happen, but I will accept. The more spikes we have, the happier I am. The more unhappy everything else is. Like that little creature who's now getting double spiked, but he's slightly quicker still. This won't do at all. So more spikes and a little more speed. My ATP production is too low, but that sounds like a problem for something else. Whoops, I just stabbed my friend. There we go. Look, we can stab a whole bunch of people. We're like a trident without eyes that attacks everything as soon as it can sense it. 
<laughs> Look at these bumbling idiots. They just float around spiking into each other even. And every generation we start again, but we'll make ourselves bigger and add more spikes. But I've definitely succeeded in my goal of making creatures that cause only suffering. Like, it's just a world of spikes now. Any other creature just dies due to raw aggression and spikiness. And then there's Spore, which is always a fan favorite. Mostly because of the stupid things you can build and poor innocent creatures you can devour. And of course, the more you eat, the bigger you get and the more parts you can stick on this thing. We've already gotten bigger because we put some little things in our mouth. Now we can eat them in one hit, but now there's bigger creatures to fight us. It's really just about trying to put as many things into our mouths as we can. Now the key to any good build is just making things wildly bigger and also adding spikes. In saying that, eyes are overrated. So our new evolution is a creature that can't really see where it's going and it just blindly swims around <laughs> flying into things, either stabbing or eating them, preferably both. This thing gets it, it's got so many eyes it can definitely see the terror coming, so we're slowly going to consume it. <laughs> the more it runs, the more I like it. <laughs> the best part is we just get bigger and bigger so we can just put more and more things in our mouth. I also forgot to make the spikes bigger, everything needs to be absolutely maximum size, except for maybe the tail because I don't want people to bite that. I also need to remember to <laughs> thicken it up a little bit so we can fit more spikes. So from here it really just is a matter of adding enough spikes. And we obviously need more of these to make us go faster. We need to be really quick, really hard to control, and really spiky. So let's give this new disaster a try. Now nothing's going to want to mess with us because we're just covered in spikes and we don't know what's around us. And the best part is there's more of me out there. We're just floating balls of doom. We can still get faster, but for now we're already making ocean life miserable for everything out here. Like we just go into a ball of these idiots and they're all doomed. See, at this point the game wants me to keep evolving, but I'm already just about perfect, so I really don't have to do much of anything. I just swim around and eventually things die, eventually I happen to eat them, and life goes on. And we just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Look at how scared this little creature is, it's adorable. Get inside me. That one did drop some thing fins that make us turn faster. We don't need to turn. We don't need to guide ourselves at all. We just swim around stabbing things. I'm an equal opportunity murderer. I don't discriminate. Everyone has a fair chance to die. In fact, I don't even have a lot of control over what I'm eating or killing. But there you have it, one unstoppable, uncontrollable doom beast that exists only to cause suffering for everything else in the ocean. It's just very hard to go wrong as Spore, but there's still a ton we could do with all of these games.